Hey guys, welcome back to another installment of Hair Tube. Um, I don't need to introduce CJ, you guys would remember CJ from a uh, look that we did probably about, would it be probably about a year ago now. CJ had very long hair. It's the second most viewed uh, video on our channel. It has around 220,000 views. Um, and you guys have had lots of nice comments. You can see someone else has had a chance of cutting CJ's hair before me, but she's coming today and I'm gonna cut all the hair off. So I don't um, really know exactly how it's gonna turn out. As always, um, with hair that's been lightened, um, it's gonna have its challenges. But we've had a reference um, picture from an uh, actress named Claire from House of Cards. You guys are probably aware of that miniseries. So it's gonna be quite short, um, soft in the front, sweat fringe that can be pushed left or right. Um, nice and tidy in the nape. One thing I want to be sure about is to make sure we keep it nice and feminine. Um, so we're not going to do too many sort of hard lines around. And yeah, I think CJ look really good. And stay tuned. Let's see how it turns out. You happy? Yeah, happy. You ready? Yeah. All right, ready. we're going to do it. <laughs> see you in a minute. Before I go and make a major change um, with someone's length even though CJ's hair used to be there now it's here we're gonna make it shorter I make sure I give it a really 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 I can't stress enough really vigorous shampoo it's very important that the hair has really good cleanse uh, has a really good cleanse and it's super super clean and then before I start I like to go through and identify any sort of problems with growth patterns or anything Straight away you can see the hair separates there. So that's something to, to note that if you were maybe considering doing something short here, which we're not, uh, you'd probably avoid um, to, uh, I guess, to ensure that you don't have an embarrassing, um, or you have to make an, an embarrassing omission or uh, have an explanation at the end to why something doesn't sit the way you thought it would. It's really good to start mapping out what's happening around the hair and uh, identifying anything that may be a bit of an issue. So the first part of this haircut is understanding distribution and where the hair needs to fall. I'm combing this forward onto CJ's face um, just so I can get it out of the way primarily and to also see how the hair is growing because this is going to be cut into a section that is going to be flexible in terms of which way CJ um, parts the hair. She can wear it with a part or without one. I'm just going to spin around. But we're going to start in the back today. So I might just section this out. Just leave your feet on that rest if you can. Just so I don't get your ankle caught underneath. That can be a bit painful as we found out. So as I mentioned to you guys, um, we're going to use Claire Underwood short style as inspiration um, obviously I'll need to tailor the haircut to suit CJ not the same person however we're going to use that silhouette as an inspiration for for this haircut on CJ so um, there may be some variations I'm not attempting to make it look exactly the same so please don't judge me for that um, but nevertheless we'll start in the back That's not drooping, is it? No. Oh, cool. So I've taken, um, obviously, center parting, split it in half, um, even distribution. Yeah, we might be parting it on one side, but I like to have symmetrical partings when I cut. I'm gonna work this section here, which is just below the occipital bone, slightly diagonal um, lines. Um, just purely not for any other reason other than distribution of hair. I don't need the hair above the ears yet, so I want it out of the way. I'm just going to work through vertically. We're going to do some graduation and start to build this shape. I would normally sit directly behind each section I cut, but in the interest of you guys being able to see better and not have my big arm in the way, I'm going to sit just off to the side a little bit. The reason why I'm choosing to build 
uh, my shape using vertical sections this time is because horizontal sectioning for this particular haircut would build too much weight and I want the hair to be flatter purely because there's so much of it. I don't think we'll need to actually build pronounced shape, hence we don't need to use horizontal section. I was talking to CJ um, earlier about a haircut when she showed me the, um, the Claire Underwood picture as inspiration and I mentioned to her that I think it was either in season, it was either in season two or three where they actually, whoever was responsible for doing the hair, they cut it quite short and I felt it actually didn't suit her. Um, so I also recall, I think at the end of, I think it was the end of, which season was it when she went up to New York to see her boyfriend? Do you remember that? Mm. Her hair was actually quite long. It was like almost like a short bob. Do you remember that? No, I don't remember what it was. A slight, was a slightly longer version. So we're going for essentially a slightly longer version. Once I've um, cut my shape vertically, I'm just going to go back horizontally. And we're just going to cross check just to make sure that it's even. very important that we get this part of the hair cut right because this is going to provide us our map or our guideline or our foundation for the sides and for also the back the back here and transitioning into the side Right, next section, just going to work in half inch or one and a half centimetre section and we're just going to continue all the way up to the crown, working that out at 45 degrees, spin you guys around so you can see. Most of you guys ask um, what scissor and comb I'm using. I'm actually using a nine, I think it's a nine and a half inch carbon comb. And I'm using seven and a half inch uh, straight blades with um, swivel bearing and mountain edge. And they're made by uh, Excellent Edges in Australia. The reason why I've chosen this scissor is because um, 
the scissors with a, a mountain edge or a bevel on the top generally have more weight in the blade and are sharper and more sort of geared towards cutting thicker, larger sections of hair. I think you guys have heard me speak probably at length about making sure that not only we're working accurately, but we need to work intelligently and to the time constraints that us as commercial hairdressers have. We don't have an hour to do a short haircut like this. Um, I would probably take half an hour. So maybe it would be a 45 minute appointment, 15 minutes to prepare the hair for the haircut and then wet to dry would generally be half an hour. Um, and we'll probably run a little bit over time because I would like you guys to see as much as you can of this so i'll probably go a little bit slower not that i would ever rush someone but so you can see we're starting to build that shape and yes you can see weight starting to build there we probably will remove or soften that weight but as i've mentioned in previous videos i'm not going to remove it unless i'm 100 percent sure that i don't need it there um, it's very easy to remove weight in here but once you've removed it you cannot put it back so don't cut it off unless you're sure Another half inch or one and a half centimetre section. We're getting towards the crown now. We're not that far away. I'll just spin CJ around so you can see where I've sectioned that two in the side. So now working just to the point of the ear. So the point of the ear to me is here. And again, before I start cutting it, I always like to have a nice neutral distribution of hair. I don't like to stretch it into a direction and cut it if it's not where it naturally falls. So for example, I wouldn't go and comb this over here and cut it. What I wanna do is make sure that the hair's falling at natural fall. So each section I'm working into is being cut at natural fall. You all right, CJ? All good. Sweet. This hair here is essentially now the length. The reason why I've over-directed it because I will address this length here when I work through the side and cut it around the ear. There's no need to continue this around and cut that hair off at this point because um, it doesn't need to come off yet. So through here is essentially the length of that whole haircut, how it's gonna be. I think that's real, real nice length. Obviously, once we texturize it, it will get a little bit shorter and it's sitting really good. And I was a little bit worried that it wouldn't, but it's great, it's really good, it sits great. I tried to get CJ to do this, man, how long ago? I remember I was like, come on, do a shoot with me, but you've got to cut your hair off. <laughs> like, no, I can't do it. I worked up the courage. Yeah, we reached, we reached <laughs> that point. Speaking of photo shoots, um, my photographer Jez will be in soon. Um, I don't know if um, our amazing cameraman, you guys have never met him, but he's standing there right now behind the camera, Jimmy. Um, he might hang around later and just get a couple of minutes behind the scenes footage of, of Jez and I doing some light testing before he takes off for today. For any of those that are interested, maybe we can tag it on the end of this video or create a separate one. One thing I want to mention is, and I'm not doing it, but I would, is I'm leaning to the side 
and I'm, I'm sort of look a little bit lazy. If I wasn't obstructing the camera, I would literally be working parallel to my section every time I'd be radiating, but obviously then you guys wouldn't see anything. So something really to keep in mind. If um, you're less, you know, you're less likely to drag the hair from the section that it should be cut in if you're sitting right behind and you literally section, comb goes in, fingers going behind, my arms in line, my elbows up and working, working that way. I don't recommend doing what I'm doing and sort of slouching to the side because if you're less experienced you'll end up cutting a hole and ruining your whole shape and then you have to go back and start again. You can see Again, on this side, I've left that length, I've over-directed it because no point cutting it off until we get there and we know we need it gone. It sits in there quite nice. Just get my sectioning right on this side. Then I'm going to spin CJ around so you guys can watch me cross-check the back. Pretty good. Looks even to me. Close enough is good enough, eh, CJ? Nah, <laughs> no joking, no, it's great. Just kidding. Okay, so all we're gonna do now is we're gonna skip from the sides and we're gonna go straight up. We're gonna use this guide, this length here, as a guide to take a, um, actually we did this on, let me recall the video, we did this on, um, what's the name? Did we do it on Abby? Yes, we did it on Abbey, and I called it square layers. So this is horizontal square layering, um, was a technique I learnt while studying the philosophy of Tony and Guy, who are amazing hair cutters, I might add. Um, this they call square layering. Square layering essentially is horizontal sections, and it's increased layers. So increased layers means we have a stationary guideline, which is now there. We just bring this up to make sure that we don't leave a weight line behind. Nothing to cut, bring the side in. And the reason why they call it square layers is because they section in square or rectangle patterns. So I'll spin CJ around. If you could just put your chin down for me, gorgeous. So we're just gonna take a square section straight through the middle. We're gonna bring everything back to that point. So it's essentially short to long. You could do it vertically. So we could do it coming around this way if we wanted. Um, I just find doing square layers um, for us is going to leave squareness in the sides and again it's going to leave the hair there until we need it to cut off. So I'll go through take this section real quick and I'll try and section it out neat. You guys probably notice that even in my long videos and any video I very rarely use sectioning clips. There's a couple of reasons for that. Um, it may be a good or bad habit but I find that uh, sectioning clips can sometimes um, slow me down because you've got to put them in take them out. So provided my client's not uncomfortable with having the hair around their face, um, I generally don't use clips. Let's spin CJ back, make sure this section's right. And then I'll get her to put her head down and you'll be able to see that it's a square or a rectangle. But you can see it's square layers, yeah? Yeah, awesome. What I find with using horizontal sections the reason why I use horizontal and not vertical, so horizontal this way, vertical that way, is because generally speaking, vertical sections when cutting through the top will make the hair fall onto the face. I find that horizontal sections are neutral, so they won't do either, which allows you a little bit more flexibility with styling because they generally just fall like this. Yep. This is where you'll see lots of hair start coming off. I'm not doing the sides yet. We're just going through working this center panel. Increase layering, so we're increasing the hair back to this original guideline, which is just above the crown. And it will leave the hair longer towards the front.
I'm actually looking into at the moment doing some live feeds. I'm going to get Jimmy to look into how we can hook the camera that we're filming with today to a computer so we can do a live haircut. For you guys, we'll probably do West, West Coast time, USA. So that's the majority you folk are from. And um, that way, I'll have someone come in and while I'm cutting hair, we can have you guys asking live questions. We tried doing it on Periscope when we were in LA. We just found that Periscope just gets clogged up real quick and there's too many, too many people on there all at once. So if you guys remember, we did in the last couple of um, the last couple of videos, we did commercial, not I don't like the word conservative, but commercial wearable versions of the shag. Well, I just showed you an edgy one. So if you had someone with a bob length haircut that wanted a, a really edgy shag and wanted to leave it, you can do that on there. You've left the disconnection. Then you just need to go back and texturize just through those mid lengths so that it wasn't real hard and it was soft. But yeah, essentially that's the same technique as what you do if you're doing like a shag and you got that coming through like that. Looks pretty cute actually. Yeah, all right, so now we're gonna blend those sides in. Again, increasing back to the original section. CJ's come all the way down from Byron Bay to see us today, which is amazing for her to make the effort. No, not really. Well, she did come from Byron Bay. <laughs> But she actually has family that lives here in Canberra, so um, we always try and catch up when she's here. This time, I'm the one that has the utter privilege to. This this haircut's going to change your life. I'm not going to say I'm going to change your life because that's a bit conceited, but this haircut's going to it's going to change your life. Not me, the haircut, and I can proudly say that I'm responsible. This way, just so I can see, we do this side. So, again, I'm working down this time. We've gone into the side, we're using vertical sections in the side, and we're bringing this up to that point. Not cutting off hair that I don't need to cut off yet. And you guys are probably asking, well. Why do the back and then the top? Like, why wouldn't you just go straight to do the sides? Because um, I'll give you my crazy rationale, and that is, I've cut myself a guide in the back. I'm gonna get dizzy by the end of this. Mm -hmm. cut, I cut myself a guide in the back here, you can see the length. I brought that through the top. Now all I need to do is connect the bottom, and the top are connected. Those lengths aren't gonna change, they're just gonna get texturized. You can see the length of the hair here. You can see that coming through. Now, it's just a matter of connecting the top to the bottom. So literally come through. And there it is. We're just gonna take that off. Then we're gonna go around the ears and we're done. We just gotta texturize. So that's why I do it because I know that the top of this haircut is really crucial so it's, it's an important part. The sides, well, they're not, they're not, not important, but in terms of the construction of the haircut, the top and the back are the most important. So I, I over-directed and left hair here until I was ready to cut it off, similarly with this. So yeah, some of you guys, why didn't you just like cut the corner off? You're right, I could have. I could have just cut that off, but I don't need to cut it off yet. So we're leaving that there. Spin back round to the back. I'm gonna work our way all the way through here. So the start of joining the top to the bottom is we're just gonna find that, that crown. Could you look up to the ceiling for me? Just wanna show you guys a little tip. This is how too far, but this is how I, I find the crown. So I just comb the hair to the side and it's sort of like when you, you're looking for a part in the front, just push it back. That's where the hair wants to grow back. 
So that's our guide for the back. Really important you get that right because if you don't, um, a lot of the time what happens is you end up with a weight line here and you don't really know why. Well, it's just because you've cut too far forward and then you're trying to make this come back and it doesn't belong there. So I'll show you again. Just comb to the side, push. It finds itself. Look at that crown spring up, look at that. Really, really important you know what that is. All right, let's go through and cut this uh, middle section out. There's my guide there in the top. Spin around so you can see. I'll come this way. There's my guide there in the top. Here's my guide there in the bottom. And we're just gonna literally cut that point out. And the reason why we get a point is because where two, two techniques meet, you get a point. You can either leave the point in if you wanted to create almost like a bob shape and you can see that forming like that. And then you could just, this part here, you could soften texturizing. We actually need it shorter than that, so we need to cut that off. Where are you going after this? You said you're going to someone's party, right? Yeah, have something party. Do they know you're cutting your hair off? No. Wow. Nobody knows. Awesome. Mm. <laughs> well, I hope the people who own the house aren't um, going to be upset that people will be asking more questions about your hair than their house. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. Some people use water as it's drying out. I use this stuff. This is magic water. You guys can see now that this length is starting to come through. Hey Jez. How you going? Good. Hey, you seem to like trip with my beard. <laughs> no worries man. Say hi to everyone on YouTube. <laughs> so you can see now that this, this length here is actually perfectly poised to cut around the ear. How do I do that? I'm pretty much a guess. It comes from experience. You just sort of know <laughs> From experience, where to, where to, um, where to find the right length, just from using sight. But the whole time, that's what I was aiming for, to get that top right, so that we can just work through this side. And you literally just then have to cut it around the ear and texturize, and we're done. We still good there, Jimmy? Mm -hmm. This is now addressing that little corner that I over-directed to the center when I started working the back section first. We're just now removing this length here. You got good ears too, CJ. Thank you. Good ears. <laughs> if they stuck out a lot, you might want to consider leaving out of your ears. Yeah. <laughs> Is that really weird? Someone telling you you got good ears? Um, I haven't actually been complimented on my ears. Yeah, oh, that's good. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only weirdo. I do not have an ear fetish. <laughs> right, I get trolled enough on my channel. Please don't troll me about ears. Might be 
top side. Just to see me creating the shape from in front. So the goal is today, so CJ's last video has 200 and I think, hang on, I remember exactly, I'm really good at that, 218,824 viewers. The reason why is because we weren't sure whether she held the record for the most views or the second most, so absolutely has to be the second. So what we want to do is we want to get this video to 500,000. Now I know that sounds a little bit ambitious, but I guess it can be done. But to get it there, what we need you guys to do is share this video on Facebook, share it on your own channel, make sure you click just here above CJ's head, subscribe, click this subscribe button here so that we can uh, spread the love and get CJ half a million views. So once I get to above the ear, I need to stop. We need to preserve this length in the front. So I'll just bring CJ back. We need to preserve this length in the front here. So we're gonna start over directing, bringing the hair back to here. And do not cut this fringe off, you need to leave it. So um, one variation could be um, for someone who wanted to leave their ears covered, you could leave it like that. That would then give them the ability to tuck, um, which I think the long version of Claire Underwood's um, hair, she actually did tuck it. Um, so that would be the long version, which hmm, I'm actually considering leaving it because now that I tuck it, I don't know that there's actually going to be an advantage to cutting it off. So I might leave it long, and if CJ wants me to cut it off after she sees it and touches it, it's a very easy adjustment. It's just a matter of... Um, this nice diagonal back section here, cutting it around the ear and cutting that around the ear because all this doesn't change. It's just this little bit of length here. All right, let's get going on this and then we'll do the other side. So over directing it back to above the ear, we just spin this way, we're good. Making sure that we're still vertical, don't build weight towards the front. You're only gonna have to go back and cut it out that section back onto there, we're not cutting that yet. You look good like that. Let's, let's be wow. realistic. We can, we can shave CJ's head, you look good. <laughs> let's be realistic about it. Don't wanna, you know, I'm a very proud, uh, I'm a very proud cutter of hair. <laughs> I've never proclaimed to be the best, but I will admit one thing. Um, I haven't saved the world, nor have I found a cure for some of the most heinous diseases on earth. I stay humble because I just cut hair. So you cannot take the credit for a haircut on someone when they look good with a shaved head or long hair. <laughs> Give credit where credit's due, right? All right, let's go around to this side part. After my little ramble. Yeah, I said that to someone months ago too. You're just a hairdresser and you chill out, you're not saving the world. <laughs> Like, wow. What did you say? What did 
you just saw I just got lost. And I'll tell you why I got lost, because I started talking shit, not concentrating on what I was doing. So if you do get lost like me, don't just think you know where you're going. Go back, find that part, find that crown, that guideline that we so desperately need. Resection, regroup. It can happen when the phone rings, Adam, your next client's here, Adam, your phone's ringing, Adam, someone on the phone for you, whatever, so you need to regroup. So I've gone back, found my original section because it's my guide, so we can continue to work this shape through. We are human after all. I think it's the failure comes from the failure. Failure stems from failure to admit that we're just human, right? It's okay to say, I'm just a man, I'm not superhuman. Thank you uh, also to you guys who are watching the videos. Um, Jimmy and I are always trying to make this clearer and better for you guys. We did get it wrong, um, but uh, thank you for the positive feedback because uh, you guys have acknowledged that the filming is much better and that um, you guys are now having a better viewer experience watching it, even as Jez brings in his uh, equipment and sounds like the house is falling down. <laughs> Are we good here, Jimmy? Use that little bit that I over directed and didn't need, so now I'm going to address that. You can see that little corner there, I'm just going to lock that off. It's really easy to do because we've got our guideline there. Always remember to keep your fingers pointed in the direction that you're trying to cut the hair. If you remember that, less chance of a mistake. continue around through the side save myself 10 minutes I'm gonna come back and check the balance there's no point continuing if you don't have the length the same on both sides because you're only gonna to have to stop and come back and start again it's pretty good magic water
I just find the the Matrix Hydrosaur spray just your comb just glides through. I don't know. I find that um, it's almost like um, it stops me from applying unnecessary tension to the hair with the comb, like because I don't need to try and. I don't know it's it's hard to explain. Like you you don't have to you don't have to pull. I guess is it pull or push? Push or pull through the hair with the comb as hard when you use that. It just sort of just glides through. Just um, making a little adjustment on this side. Just felt it wasn't quite perfect. Now it is almost done in this side panel. Then we'll address the top. I might actually, even after saying I'm not going to use clips, just if CJ's comfort, it's starting to dry out and it gets very itchy when it sits on your face. And seeing as we're going to be taking some nice photos of her, we don't need it with red watery eyes. Okay, so we've done the sides. They're not finished by any means, nor are they perfect. Because now what we're gonna do is I'm just getting rid of this. No, I'm not getting rid of it. I'm removing this original section we did because now I'm looking for balance. So I'm just gonna spin CJ back around this way so you can see. When I say I'm looking for balance, the hair's starting to dry. So I'm looking for a few things. One is, the hair in the hairline is growing down this way. So I want to make sure that it's incorporated and it's layered in that part of the cut. So we're just going to comb that down. And then similarly on this side, again, you guys can't see from there, but I've combed it, pushed back, found that part, the part that goes right over CJ's crown. Take this section out. And again, with the other side, you can see that this hair is growing down and it's going this way, so I'm gonna leave that out, yeah? If you guys um, haven't already, can you please check me out on Instagram? Um, if you guys are educated, I'm sorry, if you guys are interested in, in live education, especially those of you in Asia, um, Southeast Asia and um, the USA, um, I am taking expressions of interest via my Instagram in the month of October because I would like to come out to California um, and out of Bay Area and then definitely um, probably the East Coast, Boston, Massachusetts, New York, around there, to uh, not only just to meet some of you guys, but to maybe we can do some live workshops and stuff. So make sure you go and check out my Instagram, um, like, like my, and follow my Instagram, because the, the details of the proposed workshops that we're gonna do in the US will be posted on there probably in the next couple of weeks. So just looking back through now, you can see the hair starting to dry. And what I notice where it's starting to dry is little weight lines. So the weight lines can come from, you know, I say it all the time when I'm teaching my classes for Matrix around the country. If you get it, if you, if you get it wrong by one millimeter there, 
and you're taking one centimetre sections, by the time you get 10 centimetres around the head, it's one centimetre longer than it needs to be. So if it's a little bit out, it's best to stop, go back through, and make sure that you've got the length right before you continue. Just gonna get this length here right. Then we're gonna do the top, I'm gonna dry it off. I'm gonna do my fun part, the texturizing. Texturizing for me is, you know, I guess, let me, let me go back, let me go back one sec. I guess it's um, probably maybe, a, a, for some it's a criticism, albeit a fair criticism, that I'm a, maybe a classic hairdresser, that the haircuts I do are based on classic shapes, and I would agree. What I would disagree with is that the haircuts that I do aren't on trend, aren't modern, and aren't relevant. And the reason why I believe they are is because all I use classic shape for is to build the, the crucial foundation in building structure in hair so that for your client it grows out well, it lasts, and it's easy to dry. Then you make things modern and you adapt them to whatever trend it is by adding a fringe or changing an element or lots of texture or less texture. You know, we've been doing in, a, I think we mentioned in the last series, or last video, a few videos we did, we were talking about increased layering because we were in a period of blunt cutting, minimalist layering or no layering at all. People want to change. Well, that video showed you a great way to be able to change the haircut without having to do anything too dramatic. So I believe that by introducing elements such as that makes your haircuts relevant and, um, and on trend. So the reason why I like texturizing is for me, that's how I personalize my haircuts and that's how I make things mine, is by making sure the texture is of the time, whether it's light, whether it's heavy, um, I think that uh, definitely doesn't make it classic, even though some people say it's classic. So I'm now going to, as you can see, I've come back around to readdress this length. Wasn't quite happy with it. I want to be able to leave some hair for CJ to tuck because I think tucking looks good. So I'm going to over-direct this part, keep it low, keep it tight, and it just gets behind. And the reason why we want it to just get behind is because we want it to look short. We don't want it to look bob. If we leave it too much, it'll look like a bob. Cool. Cool. Look at those cheekbones. Fuck. Fuck. Look at that face. Fuck. Can you believe she had all that hair on it for so long? Trust me, if they can teach me, they can teach anyone, but thank you for the compliment. Did you get that? She said I was good. <laughs> and she's hot and she's blonde, so that means 10 times more than if someone has said it. All right, back to what we're doing here, cutting hair. Jimmy, can we see there? We good? Yeah. Jimmy has a voice, did you hear that? Please give a thumbs up <laughs> on the comment section if you just heard, heard Jimmy's voice. I will try at some stage throughout the next few videos to try and get him in front of the camera, but good luck with that. Because he edits it, he'll just delete himself out. Actually, um, had to go back a little bit then because I found a little bit behind, must have got stuck behind the ear that I missed. 
I fixed it. All right, over direct into the back, only just, so it tucks behind the ear. And comb that out, it should just get behind. And hopefully it will resemble something similar to the other side. It should be nice. Cool. We'll leave that top section. We're gonna get some of our smooth setter. I'm gonna quickly blast this. I'm gonna texturize dry, leave this wet, pull this down, and then we're gonna work this in and create that beautiful sweat fringe, yeah? All right. So um, I'm just using a little bit of Matrix Smooth Setter. You can see that there. Great product, really nice and light. Um, just to help dry it. One thing I'll mention is this is cut completely with straight solid lines. Yes, obviously, I mean, not solid as in solid form, but solid as in I've not used any thinning scissors, texturizing shears, whatever you want to call them, nor do I point cut shapes. I think if you point cut shapes, they end up growing out poorly. You can always add texture later. You shouldn't be able to, well, you shouldn't be able to, is not the right way to say it. You shouldn't create structure with point cutting, in my opinion. So I think it's fair to say, it probably looks all a little bit solid and chunky and yucky. Well, that's all about to change. So I like taking horizontal sections when I do this. I essentially point cut the entire haircut, which can sometimes take me 10 minutes, maybe longer. And I learned this technique many moons ago from an amazing hair cutter, who I believe is still at Sassoon in Manchester. His name is Bruce Macefield. And I spent, had the pleasure of spending a week with Bruce in London, working on a few things, honing my skills. I was feeling a bit flat, needed some inspiration. So I went home. For me, Sassoon's home. Everything has to be premeditated, measured and calculated before you do it. And that's why I love Sassoon. Different in it. Softening it all up, you get some really nice texture. Doesn't look chunky and classic anymore. If you thin the hair out, I've probably mentioned this in my videos before, excuse me if I'm anyone CJ. You have to um, remember that short hair directs long hair. So if you go and cut short hair amongst long hair in here, it's gonna make it bigger. It's gonna give it more volume. Unless you texturize it to the point that it absolutely collapses, and then you just spend 40 minutes creating a shape and 10 minutes destroying it and growing out in two weeks. So for me, you remove density through the mid lengths and ends and leave the rest alone because you don't wanna create more volume and more, I guess you could say more buff, more frizz. And that's what those awful scissors do. I do use them, I have to say. 
Um, seldom do I use them. I think um, there's better tools now. There's an amazing company here in, Sydney, in sorry Melbourne, Exxon Edges, that are always have a very inspirational, creative guy named Peter, who's always developing new scissors that make our job easier but also keeping in mind the impact that it has on the hair and making sure that it doesn't compromise our haircuts, it enhances them, so. I do use some of those, but they're not your traditional, you know, one, two, miss a few, those really nasty thinning scissors. How do I know I've texturized enough? I feel it in my hands and see it with my eyes and when it sits right and it feels right, I stop. You can see the difference, huh? There and here, look. Massive difference. We'll often talk about working efficiently and intelligently, and sometimes that does mean compromising certain things. For me, this is one thing we never compromise. Some things that I will compromise, and I think I've spoken about it a lot, is section size. Um, I think that sometimes I do take quite large, generous sections, and generally, um, some would say that that's technically incorrect, and they're right. But my point is that I think that's one thing that can be compromised without severely compromising the outcome of the haircut for the client. If you're using sharp scissors and you're experienced and you know what you're doing, you obviously make a decision based on the amount of hair, the length of hair, the haircut you're doing. And I quite often take generous sections to be more efficient, but I'll never rush this process by using primitive, nasty tools that are designed to try and make this job easier um, because there's no way of doing it other than this way. I hope I smell all right, CJ, sorry. <laughs> I do wear Chanel blue, so I hope it smells good. Almost done. I like to stand behind because I like to look down onto the hair. So I guess I get a better view from up here, I guess. You can see how much weight's coming out. And I find that I have more control with the hair between my fingers. Hope it's looking all right, because I can't see it yet. Feels amazing. Almost done. All right, so you can see we've now got our length in there. And one thing I, I remember I, I um, said in the beginning, I wanted to keep it soft. 
when I wanted to keep soft lines, I didn't want it to be masculine. So I'm quite happy for this to, to be soft like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we need to go and sharpen it up around, around the ears. It actually looks incredible. Look at the texture, it looks great. I mean, you can't see it, but we can. I mean, that's amazing. Cool, all right. The fun part. So with this part here, while we have an audience gathering in the street watching through the window, this is essentially how it's gonna look here. Yeah? So this is essentially how it's gonna look if we do it this way. Obviously we need to texturize this in. This will be tucked. Let me see how it looks. Amaze balls. Let's see balls. the other way. Do it this way. I think this way will be nice if we want to have an upward lift in terms of the styling because you'll be able to get it up off the face. This way. Yeah, so that'll be good if you want it up yeah. off the face and behind. Yeah, but essentially we're gonna texturize this entire section in. So what I'm gonna do now is grab my smooth setter again. Just a tiny bit. A little bit of my magic water, also known as my large hydro source spray. Spray that in the top. Wet products go in better when it's wetter. The wetter the better. It's actually quite cool if your client wanted a bit more drama. I guess you could you could leave it quite disconnected. Um, which I have every intention on doing, but I'm gonna texturize it first. Um, which will remove some length. You guys are probably well aware that texturizing hair makes it shorter, as you can clearly see by this. Uh, a lot of you guys probably were looking at it going, Adam, it's not short enough. That's not what Clear Underwood says like, but now we've gone from point cut at all. It's, you know, it's exactly how it is, perfect. See how important it was for me to go through and do that? Because look what happens when I try and comb it up that way. I don't want to go there. So you find where the crown is. Come to the left or right, leave it where it belongs, towards the back. You probably saw I just cut myself a little cheeky guide for my texturizer before I start drying it. I was, wasn't gonna not explain what I did. Throughout this entire, throughout this entire haircut, drying it off, I've not used excessive amounts of manipulation. One thing that's really important, CJ and I were talking about it. She's from Byron Bay. Who is don't know where Byron Bay is? It's on the north coast of New South Wales. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Just before the Queensland border. Mm -hmm. um, she's a beach lover. Lived by the beach. She ain't gonna go home and use a round brush. Like why would she? I mean, she's not 50. She's a young woman. And we want something wearable. If you cannot make it sit right with something simple, minimum manipulation, a great product, which these days will aware if she wants it to sit well, she can use something like the Messy Maker, which is a great sea salt spray, or the Smooth Setter. If you need to stretch or manipulate more than these simple tools, you might want to think about other ways you can approach your haircut, because I do believe that there is a place for straightening, stretching, round brushes. But for me as a hair cutter, wash and wears how it's got to be. You really just want to use minimal manipulation. Just watching how the hair falls. Wow, that toner really changed the colour, man. It's really bright.
see what we come up with here. When you're texturizing, I've said it in many of my other videos, um, be careful not to remove the shape that you cut. How do you remove the shape of your cut? I only did it once this time. Once is, is good, it's good. Yes, I dropped my comb. Well, someone got upset at me because um, I failed to go and watch the comb afterwards on one video. A bit awkward. Um, make sure you don't go in sideways. If you go in sideways, that's not wrong. We're actually going to dramatically change the shape of the hair and we don't want to do that. We just want to essentially move some of this weight and we want to soften it and we want it to fall quite, quite naturally. See how that goes. Sorry for me to be rough. It's never my intention. You can see how much shorter that texturizing just made that top part. I'm going to move a little bit of length going in sideways. Now I'm going to soften by going in really nice and straight. Spin CJ around this way so you can see what's happening on this side. over directing it back now. I want to make sure we don't cut too much length off in that front. Just spin the background so you can see where I've over directed it to. Back to the ear. If you guys will remember when I did the side, I brought that back to around the ear. And this is where we'll stop in terms of progressing towards the face. So going in a little bit on, a, on an angle, just to remove some length, you guys can see that, the length coming off. And then straight in to remove the bulk. And I guess in a way this is gonna leave a disconnection, it's not gonna be perfectly blended, but as I said to you before, I don't want it to look like a classic shape, I want it to be edgy, and this is a way you leave it edgy. It's awesome, I'll show you guys this side so you can see how it's starting to work in around here. See this slightly disconnected here? That'll work in behind the ear really nice. Let me come around there so I can see, make sure. Sensational. Just watching the movement, seeing how this could potentially flow that way. As you cut hair, as I've learned over the, over the years, things can change. Hair is a completely unpredictable medium. You can cut it expecting it to do one thing and it does something completely different. So when I'm doing things like this, I'm always not in a rush. This is, as I said, the area that I won't compromise. I'm watching how the short hair on top is affecting the long hair underneath and making sure it's moving in any direction and you can start to see that it's going to be working into that sweep fringe there, it's starting to happen. So, back to my horizontal sections on the top. Here 
you guys a side view. Final section, or the money shot as they call it. Make sure it's back up to where that ear is. And if I've done it right, our length will be great. Again, this one, I've gone in slightly diagonal. Yeah, removing length at random. Because again, we want this to be modern and edgy and soft and textured. Just taking off those little burrs in the top. And then we're going deeper and directly straight in to remove the bulk. I'm gonna work back in a little bit horizontally. And now vertically, just to check to make sure and you can see, we have that nice gradual shape coming in towards the front. Gonna give CJ a bit of a blast because she's got hair all over her face. <laughs> Now I'm going to let you decide because this is a variation that's your hair and that's why we're here, we're here for you. Don't ever forget that these people I sit in these chairs are real people and although you might not um, hear us have the intimate conversations we have about their lifestyle and making sure that the haircuts that they're, they're having are what they actually want, um, I actually do have those conversations because they're very important. So I'm going to let CJ decide whether she wants to leave this long so that you can tuck it because once I cut this off, that will sit there and this will be like that. So you will be able to tuck this part behind the ear. Yep. And you will be able to tuck this part behind your ear. Yep. But if we give you that little bit of length off there, that might not travel, well that won't travel there. Yep. So you lose the ability to get it out of your face. Yeah, I think I, I need to have it out of my face. I think so. Yeah. I agree, and I think it looks good too. Yeah. So, given that CJ's, that's exactly what I would have done because as I've spoken in uh, my other videos, I'm all about flexibility with styling. I think it's really important that um, women have options when they style their hair. Um, we're gonna leave it a little bit longer. Just taking some weight out again here. And here, and then we're actually going to do some graduation just in the front. I'm actually going to pick all this hair up. It's brilliant. It's really good. They're actually the same on both sides. It's good. Um, and we're just going to give a tiny bit of structure in the front. So I'm just going to take a little bit off. And the reason why I want to do this just below 90 degrees, so it technically is graduation. Nice straight line. I want to give a bit of structure around the face too. So I think it needs to grow out nicely. So we've got a strong shape in the front. And again, I'm just going to go back and very, very gently point cut that. I'm going to work my way back. Take some weight out there. Work my way back. Take some weight out there. And we are literally seconds away from being done. Okay, so to finish off the haircut, I'm gonna use a pair of these texturizing, modern texturizing scissors um, that I was discussing. You can see that the blade has been constructed to preserve the integrity on the ends of the hair, um, and it doesn't take as much, and it's brutal, and um, oh, you can't see here, but it actually, the, the blade face actually goes like this and then up. I'm sure there's a reason for that. What I use these for is I'm just gonna go around through the hairline here and just really gently put some texture in with the direction I want the hair to go. Very, very softly. Again, I'm not doing it at the root. I'm just doing it at the mid lengths and the ends. I'm sorry if that hurts a little bit. Sometimes it does grab, so make sure you tell people before you use them. If you want a pair, I think it's edges.com.au. Tell them Adam sent you. Hopefully I might get a 5% discount or something. 
just where I, I think it needs to be a little bit loosened up on the ends, just where I want a little bit of separation, I just use these. Spin CJ back around. Gonna do the front. Just take some of the weight out. I don't want to remove any of the length. Really happy with the length. Done, I just like to go through with my hands I'll spin around this way I go through with my hands and I just I just like to pull the hair out from the scalp just to make sure I spoke earlier about you know texturizing and length for me is a feeling it's visual and it's a feeling I just like to make sure that it feels about the same length um, I don't often go for um, mathematically balanced in terms of measuring five centimeters here and five centimeters there but it needs to be visually balanced and this is a great way of doing that Feels awesome. Mm. So. All right, now I'm going to give you a really good blast because you've got hair raining out on you everywhere. Just close your eyes for me, please. Would you think, I think you probably do it that way all the time. Mm. So CJ's just said she's gonna do it this way. So what I'm gonna do, um, if you re rewind this video back about two minutes, you'll see me actually doing a horizontal line here. I'm just gonna change that. I'm actually gonna make it slightly diagonal. Why? You guys should know. Short hair directs long hair. So I put it one centimeter shorter on this side and all of a sudden it sweeps across the face a hell of a lot better. And if that's where she's gonna wear it, that's how it has to be. Um, you only do horizontal if you want flexibility, but I think you probably will wear it there all the time. Yeah, yeah. It definitely does go better that way. Again, just using a flat brush to smooth it out. Um, once you've texturized the hair as much as we have, um, you're going to end up with hair falling out of you everywhere. So you just want to make sure you give it a good Good blast. Try styling it. I'll give you something. So this is a little bit of matrix matte definer. So just take like mm -hmm. about that much. Yeah. I'll put in your hand for actually take your rings off, otherwise you're gonna plug them up. Because you're gonna style your hair for your own shoot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we're going to use a little bit of the gloss booster um, because we need it to be a little bit, not shiny, but because it's porous blonde hair, um, I'm just going to pull it out from behind you. So I'm going to try and get you to demonstrate and replicate what I do. So just rub your hands together. See how in the middle, yeah. this is a no. See that? All stuck in the palm. No good. You need to rub it so it's all over your fingers, so it's even. Mm -hmm. And then just gently, just sort of like, just start to very gently... Rub it through, mm -hmm. and then you can start, once it starts going through, you can get a little bit more heavy handed with it. In the back, in the sides. I can't do it like you do it. Yeah, and then <laughs> through the front here, in the front, coming forward. Yep, perfect. Yep, okay, so now start putting it that way. Behind the ear on this side. Yep. 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 
In the back here, you wanna make sure you got that beautiful softness in your neck, beautiful long neck. And don't forget, the bigger the hair, the closer to God. So just give yourself a bit of, <laughs> give yourself a bit of volume, you don't want to be flat. The bigger the hair, the closer to God. That's what they say. You've done a cracking job of that, CJ. <laughs> let's have a look, hey? Awesome. All right, so let's recap what we did, huh? I'm gonna give you a towel for your hands, one second. Thank you. Oh, you look hot. So we started out in the back, very, very simple. All about distribution, making sure that this panel here was the, was the holy grail of the whole haircut. So once we got that right, it's all determined by hairline and crown. Once we got that right, we went into what we call the square layers or horizontal increase layering through there. We cut our length in the front. Then we came through, we connected the sides to the bottom. We went and lopped off all that mid length, left it all, dried the top off while that was pinned away, point cut the whole lot. So it went from looking mumsy, chunky, old fashioned and classic to edgy and fun. Lots of texture. Actually the colour and the little bit of regrowth you have works real well as well. It's cool. So we'll spin around, have a look at the back. Styled by Hearst Truly, CJ. All the way around this side. As you saw in the video we discussed we're going to leave it over the years, and you can see why, because she can quite easily pull that back. She has flexibility again with styling. So if you want it to look shorter, like Ms. Underwood, because we work with silhouettes, the silhouette now is the same, but by not cutting that little bit of hair off, we have that flexibility of just having maybe a little bit of softness on this side if you want, or a little bit of softness on this side and we can pull that out. Cool. One thing I would say is always have one side on or one side off. Because if you have it on off, if you have it out both sides, yep. it's going to make your face look really small and people are less inclined to want to come and talk to you. Yeah, sure. They sort of like says, I don't want to talk to you, they go away. One side away opens your face up, makes you much more approachable and um, really shows off these. These are amazing. Cool, we're done. Thanks so much. <laughs> thanks, gorgeous. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining us, guys. Um, so, um, yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Press, press this button here, right there. It'll be about here, I think. And um, yeah, let's see if we can get CJ to 500,000 views. Please share it on Facebook. Please share it on YouTube. Tell your friends. Her last video was 218,824. We want 500,000 for this video. Thanks again for joining us. Um, there will be a separate video following on from this. You can click for the link here and you'll see a little bit of CJ in action behind the camera. Bye.